Hey, a very blessed Friday to you, dear saints. Friday, October 23rd. Today, as we gather our word for the Lord today, Psalm 107, and from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 28. This is following the daily lectionary, and you'll find that in the Treasury of Daily Prayer. You'll also find it in the front part of your hymnal. There is a um, a series there, right, says the one-year lectionary or the daily lectionary, and it'll list everything in there for you as well. Well, as we gather today, we gather and start the way we do every time, in the very words where our Lord has created us and made us his children. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The psalm for today, Psalm 107, the psalmist writes this. Some sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, prisoners in affliction and in irons. For they had rebelled against the word of the Lord and spurned his counsel, the counsel of the Most High. So he bowed their hearts down with hard labor. They fell down with none to help them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and burst their bonds apart. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he shatters the doors of bronze, and he cuts in two the bars of iron. And the Gospel reading from Matthew chapter 16. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And, be, and Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood had not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed on the third day and raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life would lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in glory, in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until the Son of Man comes in his kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Well, there are a few questions that we ask that are important. And there's one question that we ask that's really important. In the gospel today, Jesus again with his disciples and as he is continually teaching them, he asks them an important question. Who do the people say the Son of Man is? He is not just probing them to see what public opinion is. Jesus has a very specific reason for asking this. 
If we went out into the streets today, if you went out into your neighborhood or wherever we go, and we say to people, who is Jesus? You would get a lot of answers. You would get the answer, he is just like Peter gave, he is the the Christ, the son of the living God. You would get answers from people that say, I don't know. You would get answers that people would say, I, some kind of a God, or he was a great teacher, and everything in between. And what that question does is just reveals where people are. It helps us to realize how little or how far away from salvation or how exactly on top of salvation they really are. The most important question is the one that Jesus asks to Peter. Now you know Peter. Peter is kind of the, the um, default leader of the group. Peter is the one outside of James and John who are known as the sons of thunder. Peter is in that close inner circle with Jesus. By looking at him through the scriptures, we'd say he is a natural leader. He's not afraid to express his opinion. He is probably the one that speaks for the group, sometimes to his benefit, like now, sometimes to his detriment, like a little later in the reading. Jesus comes to Peter and he says, But who do you say I am? He wasn't asking the group as a whole. He wasn't asking Peter to speak for the group. Who do you say I am? That's the most important question. Peter answered it right. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's exactly who he is. How we answer that question is important. Some people will say, I know who Jesus is. And yet, they are still far from Jesus being the Savior of the world, and most importantly, their Savior. They have a a knowledge, a historical knowledge. They have a, a knowledge of Jesus here between the ears. But they have no faith, and they don't depend on Jesus to be Savior and Lord. Having a knowledge of Jesus and saying, Jesus is the Son of God, is different than answering this question You are the Christ, the Son of the living God, and believing that by faith. In that answer, believing by faith, there is salvation. Peter answered correctly. And Jesus says to Peter that this did not come from you. This is a gift from God so that you could make this confession. You see, every time we say Jesus is Lord through faith, that's because of the gift of faith that the Holy Spirit gave to us in our baptism. Jesus asked Peter, Peter confessed rightly, saving faith for him from Christ alone. Then just a little bit later in the text, we have to pick up on this. And I tell you that you are Peter, Jesus speaking to Peter, and I tell you you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Some of our Christian brothers and sisters think that that is the reason that that happened is because God was going to build his church on Peter. And Peter is the head of the church in the earth. And when Jesus says, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church, he's not speaking about the man Peter. He's speaking about the faith that Peter has when he made that confession. And on this confession, Peter, and on this saving faith, Peter, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Did you hear that? Did you hear how powerful the church of God is? That the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That all of the evil in the world and all of the things it throws at us and all of the ways that it makes us look like we are losing, the gates that protect hell cannot prevail against the church cannot prevail against Christ who died on the cross for all of our sins and in the process of being in the grave, he descended into hell and they couldn't keep him out. The risen Christ burst the gates of hell and descended and declared to the evil one and all the demons and all of those who are there that he is alive, that death could not hold him. The gates of hell shall not, cannot prevail against the risen Christ and the hope that we have in his church. When Jesus goes on in this parable, 
he starts getting a little more serious now with the disciples. As they hear that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God, he reveals to them what his future is. That the Son of Man will suffer from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, that he will be killed and on the third day be raised. Jesus is pointing them to his work, to the finality of his work, to his crucifixion, his death, and his resurrection. And as he does this, this one Peter, who has just made this very bold confession, Peter kind of sticks his foot in his mouth here. Lord, this shall never happen to you. And then Jesus rebukes him. Just a minute ago, Jesus was was commending Peter for the faith that he confessed, and now Jesus is rebuking Peter because he wants to stop Jesus from the very work he came to do. Do you see how much we need Jesus every day in our lives? One minute blessing, one minute cursing, one minute understanding, completely by faith, and the next minute trying to manipulate the kingdom of God to what we think would be best. Just a second after this, in the next paragraph, Jesus says this. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? What profit is it for a man if he is the the one that the church looks to and says, wow, what a great layman, what a great person. Look at all they volunteered. Look at all they do. Look at how they lead the church. Look at all the gifts that they have. What would it gain that person if he has all of these accolades from men and yet his faith is not in Christ alone? He would lose his soul and eternally be separated from Christ and all that is good. Dear saints, as we look at these texts today, it's important for us to remember our confession of faith is important. And it's not really our confession. It's a confession that we are able to make and believe by the gift of faith that the Holy Spirit has given to us. And as he gives us that faith, we confess Christ rightly and trust in him in all things. Peter made a lot of mistakes in the scriptures. It's easy for us to identify him with him because we do the same. But by our confession of faith, by our confession of our sins, In the confession and by God's very absolution through the office of pastor, we have great joy that not even the gates of hell or our own sin will separate us from Christ our Lord. That is our hope for today and for every day. In the name of Jesus, amen. Our catechetical review for today brings us to the 10th commandment. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or his maidservant, his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not entice or force away our neighbor's wife, workers, animals, or turn them against him, but urge them to stay and do their duty. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come and judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that he might rule and direct us according to your will. Comfort us in all of our temptations and afflictions. Defend us from all error 
and lead us into all truth, that we, being steadfast in faith, may increase in all things, in all good works, and in the end obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you, For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, dear saints, uh, thanks for joining us tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, Rusty Restorations, and then as we go forward into Sunday, into the weekend, worship at 8 and 10.30, Bible study in between, Sunday school on Sunday morning as well. We hope to see you there. Go in his peace.